Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about linear viscoelasticity and this is part two in my series on how we can think about linear viscoelasticity. In my first episode I set up the problem and I derived the, the basic equation of linear elasticity and this is the solution we came up with. And that was really interesting and all and I also showed in my first video how we can solve this equation using a kind of a brute force uh, simple way by basically evaluating this integral. And there's a function in MATLAB and Python and Julia, different math languages that's called quad or something similar to that, that allows you to calculate this kind of integral easily. But it's very, very slow because we need to repeat this for many time points. So let's take a look about how slow this really is. So to calculate the stress at a time of delta t, well, that's just evaluating all of this. And I'm going to call that n, n number of floating point operations. To calculate the stress as t plus delta t, or two delta t's, well, it's the same twice. So it adds up very quickly. Whatever you need to do in the next increment has to reproduce what you did in the previous increments. So if you actually think about this a little bit, you will see that the number of floating point operations will scale as m squared, where m is the number of time points that you want to find here. And if you have, say, 100 time points, this becomes very slow. If you have 1,000 time points, this becomes ridiculously slow. This is not how you solve this equation in real life. So when you read textbooks about linear viscoelasticity, most of it sort of stop at this point. See, so here's the equation, and this is good and all. What I want to do here, though, is try to tell you a little bit about what one does in practice, because this is clearly not practical to solve this kind of equation in this fashion. You need to do it in a different way. And that's the purpose of our uh, video here today. So how do we do it? Well, let's take a look. Uh, here's the equation again that we had from previous uh, page. And um, we need to specify some mathematical form for the relaxation modulus that I introduced in my previous video. In this case, I'm going to write it in this form. So it's E0, is initial uh, relax, uh, Young's modulus. G is the amount of relaxation. And then it's an exponential decay here. So G of R is a, it's a normalized relaxation modulus. And this is this quantity here is a one prony series terms. So I will talk about prony series terms later on. But for now, this is just what I want to use here. The simplicity, I can use one prony series terms. If you look at this, if G is 0, this becomes linear elastic. It's very simple to deal with. If G is 1, which is what I used in my previous video, this becomes a fully recovering uh, viscoelastic material. But we still haven't figured out how to solve it. We just made it into a more concrete form that somehow we need to solve. Okay, your finite element program will do it, but what, what is really going on here? And I think the approach here for solving this equation uh, is interesting because it tells you a little bit about how people think about these things. You don't often have to think about how you solve these equations. It's done for you. But I think it's useful to sometimes step back and think a little bit, okay, so what's really going on here? So I'm going to derive this for you uh, here. So first step, same equation as before. I'm going to rewrite this equation first in the following way. I'm going to integrate it by parts. So if you remember integration by parts for an integral, if you have a derivative inside of the integral, you can switch them so they have the time derivative on the other variable or the function here in this fashion. So this is easy to derive. I'm not going to derive this. This is well known. But if you apply this integration by parts to the basic equation from last time, where we integrate over this and we have a strain rate here, I can write it in the following way down here. This is just what comes out from the equation here. The stress at the given time point becomes an instantaneous stress that's given by E0, the stiffness at time 0 minus a viscous contribution. So an instantaneous response, and if we do it a little slower, there will be some viscous relaxation that occur, and this is given by this equation. And the integral is over time, and the value here is strain as a function of time. And this is this exponentially decaying function. So I can define just for simplicity, I'm going to call this yellow in instantaneous response, sigma i, and the blue integral here, the viscous contribution. And the difference between them is the total stress. This is useful, perhaps, but it hasn't shown us anything about how we can solve this equation more effectively. We still have to do some, some other tricks to it. And here's is what we do. So here is the top equation here is the same equation as the previous page. 
We need to figure out basically how to solve this integral here in a numerically efficient way. And we really are not interested in sigma of t. What we really want to do, and here's one of the two things I want to really emphasize here, is that you're looking at sigma of t plus delta t. That's what I want to know. And I, perhaps I know already what sigma of t is, but I want to take one increment further. And that's this equation. So I basically replace t in this equation by t plus delta t everywhere, and that gives me this equation. So this is instantaneous response of t plus delta t. And here is the other response. And here's what's cool, right? Because an integral of 0 to t plus delta t is the sum of two integrals. It's the integral from 0 to t, and then an integral from t to t plus delta t. So you divide it into two parts here. And that's the, the, one of the key tricks in doing this. And if you look at this equation carefully, you can actually see that it becomes almost the same as this one. It's this. It's an exponential function of minus delta t over tau 0 times the viscous stress that you have in the previous increment. So if you keep track of that, you can calculate this whole integral very quickly because you just have to multiply it by this viscous dissipation of whatever stress you had in the previous increment. That's really cool. We still have another integral here that we haven't figured out what to do with, but this is a much easier integral to calculate in some sense because it goes from only from t to t plus delta t. It's a short time interval integral, and we can do some other tricks to it to solve this numerically efficient. So let's take a look. Here's the equation again from previous page. The stress of t plus delta t, this is the instantaneous response. Here's the viscous response. And this is the final integral from t to t plus delta t. What do we do with this? Well, we have, we can integrate anything that's an exponential function. The problem here is that the strain can be any function. In, in general, strain could, doesn't have to be any specific mathematical form. This has to be solved in some way for any strain. And the, the trick we will need to use here is to assume that the strain in, during this increment is linear. So the strain is somehow increasing or decreasing linearly in this increment. And every increment may be different, but in this particular increment, we need some kind of equation for this e epsilon of tau. And here is what the, what the equation should be. So if you put in, uh, so this is epsilon of tau. If you tau equal to t, which is the lower value here, and you plug that in here for tau, you'll see that this becomes epsilon zero. So that's the initial value of the strain. If you plug in tau equal to t plus delta t, you get epsilon zero plus delta epsilon. So it works exactly like we want it to, to work. This is a linear function of tau, which has the correct strain values at the beginning and the end of the increment. Now, here's a, uh, a form and strain that is a constant plus another constant plus tau. tau. So we have integrating an exponential function times this quantity that has two parts to it, a constant and a, and a tau value. So the, it will be two integrals. We can break this integral up into two integrals corresponding to these two. The first one is simpler because this is just a constant. So it's an integral of an exponential function. We can solve that very quickly. That's just an exponential function. The second integral is a little trickier because here's an exponential function times uh, a a, con a variable, which is the tau variable that we integrate over. So we need to recall a little bit of math. This is not a hard integral, but this is something that is well known, that the integral of e to the a, a x x dx is given by this. So there is a closed form solution to that as well. We can do a little bit of math, which I did. Here's a little bit of math to prove to you that I actually calculated this. I derived this from scratch here are my equations. And it's pretty easy to do once you go through it, it uh, just do it step by step. And that's a great exercise, actually. If you kind of like math and you want to do this, go for it and see if you can come up with the same equations that I did. And here's the answer. So here is the stress at t plus delta t is equal to the instantaneous response minus some kind of viscous response. And this is how you calculate the viscous response. It's this, these three terms that you need to calculate. So to actually perform this uh, calculation, you need to keep track of s sigma v which is a state variable. So to go from t to t plus delta t, we need to know the stress, the viscous stress at each point in time so we can use that in this calculation. But there is no other complications here. This is a very straightforward, quick calculation to perform. So I can code this up. I code it up in Julia, which is this a cool math language that's free. It's really fast and it's available for you if you're interested in. 
here's the, uh, this code, it's a strain function, same as last week. And here's the new calculation of the stress. It gives you a time and a strain vector, and it calculates stress using this equation. And the rest is just plotting the results. And it works. It gives the same results as last time, but it will be at least 100 times faster. If you have a lot of data points along this curve, it could be 1,000 times faster. It's a ridiculous improvement compared to last week, even though it looks a little bit more code, but it doesn't have this uh, inefficiency that we had last time. So in practice, this is how linear viscoelasticity is calculated using these simplifications that I talked about, assuming that the strain increments are linear as, as a function of time during uh, each part here. So, so that's it. I thought it was a kind of a cool derivation. I wanted to cover that here today. Uh, we have talked about how easy it is to derive this. I showed you how you can calculate it. And there are a number of other topics I will also go through in the next few weeks. If you have any questions so far, you can always ask them below.